and welcome to the Hooked on Idols podcast. My name is Maricela, or Mari if you prefer. Today is March 1st, 2018, and this is episode 28. What? 28? Oh my gosh. I remember when I was like shocked that it was double digits, episode 10, and now I'm like, that's a lot. 28's a lot, guys. Anyway. Hello, welcome everyone. I hope you're all doing well. If you are a new viewer or previous viewer, I am wishing you good things and um, I am thankful to you for coming to spend a little time with me and I hope you enjoy the yarny goodness that I have to share with you guys today. So let's get started. Um, I have a couple finished objects. And those are, well, almost finished. These gloves that I made for my daughter. Okay, this one's completely done. I wove in the ends and everything. See, no loosey-goosey ends. No loosey-goosey ends. But this one still has loosey-goosey ends. I haven't finished sewing all the stuff in on these, but... That's okay. I'm almost there. Um, I finally finished these uh, over last weekend, I think. Um, the kids were out of school last week and we were just enjoying the nice weather. We had some lovely, lovely weather um, when they were out on vacation. Um, and... <laughs> They went back to school this week and the weather has been not so nice. It's been quite rainy and gloomy, but that's okay. Time to come back and just kind of hang out and let me knit a little bit. Um, although I feel like I haven't been doing a lot of knitting. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, so these are these uh, fingerless mittens I made for her. I asked her if she wanted me to fix them because I ended up doing different um, fingers. This one's ribbed, the other one isn't, except for like the very, very top. Uh, so I asked her if she wanted me to fix them and she said, no, it's okay, just finish them. I just am ready to wear them. So yay, uh, hopefully I'll finish weaving the ends in on this one. And then maybe she'll wear them tomorrow because I think tomorrow we are also in for some dreary weather. So, yay, dreary weather. Okay, second finished object, the Hermione Everydays that I was working on last episode. This is with the Premier Yarns Chili Colorway and the green was Mossy Green. I did Hermione's Every Day with the OMG heel from Megan Williams. I will try my best to put links in. And I did Judy's Magic Cast On. Judy's Magic Cast On. I have a story to tell you guys about Judy's Magic Cast On. Um, and then this is the second sock. I need to finish it off. Um... And this is for a family member, I uh, can't say who, but a family member will be getting these. There is their foot inside of there. Look at that. Beautiful. So that is another finished object. Just have to weave the ends in. I need to have a little weaving party. Um, or is it weave end party? I don't know and weaving party anywho so that is all I have that is finished I have a couple of works in progress oh no I I, I forgot something um last time I talked to you I was still working on the Dracaris and I actually did finish it it's done this is all that is left of this beautiful dark burgundy yarn. It's about 60 
grams out of a hundred. I used two skeins of the Craftsy Cloudborn in the mm, is it Heather colorway? I don't know. I don't remember where the band ended up. Uh, anyways, oh no, Scarlet. It was Scarlet. Scarlet colorway. Craft C. I said Etsy on the last episode, I think, and I was like, what? That's I know what I I know what I meant to say, but it was not the right one. So Craftsy Cloudborn in the Scarlet colorway. And I used this for my Dracaris. I used two skeins of fingering weight. And I loved it. I think the finished product is so beautiful. But confession time, guys. My confession today is that that shawl the entire time has always been destined for my sister um ever since sonia from desmadejada said that she was working on a design inspired by games of game of game of thrones gosh i can't talk anyways um i knew that my sister was destined for it so um i am thinking i'm gonna make myself one but i need to find the correct yarn and then um i will make myself one but that one was the entire time destined for her i want i wanted to make it for her this is the color she likes she likes red so i was like this is the one and i was really hoping to have it done for her birthday uh which is why i was working so much on it in the last episode um but i didn't make it i ended up finishing i think it was like four or five days after and I gave it to her um probably like a full week or week and a half after her birthday because I had to block it and everything and I have to say it's a struggle once you because this shawl is seven sections long and at four it starts getting kind of like okay it's taking a little while now to do each row you know and then <laughs> when you get to section six um that's when your willpower is really tested like uh how badly do i want this shawl <laughs> But I wanted it badly. I wanted it for my sister. So I persevered. I got through. I made it. I will put pictures if I haven't done so already of it finished. It blocked out beautifully. And like I said, um, even though that one was destined for my sister, I will definitely be making myself one um, just because I really did enjoy it. And like I said, even though I struggled um, later on because of how big the shawl was getting I would totally do it again it's fine it was it was it was good I, I really enjoyed it so um yeah and then I started working on these well actually no I actually cast on I wanted something for myself let me go there sorry I wanted something for myself this time and this one really is for me no no surprising no confessions later no surprises or confessions is what I meant to say I don't know what I said but that's what I meant anyway so this is the Zorzel it is by Lisa Haynes it I think it's a paid for pattern I'm pretty sure it's a paid for pattern um yes it is a paid for pattern but I got it when it was on sale, so I didn't pay full price, which is how I like to do my, my shopping. <laughs> Anyways, um, and I am loving it. It is a crescent shawl. Um, and it is beautiful. There 
is some of it. I hope you can see that. And it uses two different colors, two different skeins. And it is worked using short rows. Um, and yeah, this one is, I am loving it as well. It is totally amazing. I am on, I just finished section two. I need to start section three. I actually have not touched it in a couple of days. And um, I don't know if I'll get a couple rows in today because... It is getting rather long um, but it's actually pretty easy since it's garter stitch um, and like I said short row so nothing too too complicated but yet fun enough for you to keep wanting to work on it so I just haven't had the like mind power I've been tired so I was like I don't want it knit. anyways but I didn't even talk about the yarn. This yarn is from the Fiber Studio. It is some that I got when I went to the Southeast Animal Fiber Fest. Is that what it is? South? Staff? Whatever it was. But both of those yarns are from the Fiber Studio, or both of these yarns are from the Fiber Studios. This one is Harvest, and it is uh, like a burnt orange, and it is lovely, and the other is Painted Elephant, which again is just so beautiful. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? It is. It's gorgeous. So, anyways, uh, I am now going to switch to the gray again and start my section three. So I am excited. And um, a big part why I haven't been working on it so much because I feel like I have the time to do it. I just haven't done it. Is because when I was making the Dracaris, I was really wanting to finish it. So I was taking it with me, um, like throughout the day. And I made a couple mistakes on it where I was like, oh no, I don't want to, you know, I didn't want to rip back. And because, you know, I noticed them like way too late and I was like, oh no. Um... And so now I think I kind of got a little scared of like taking my shawls with me. But I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. I think I am going to take my shawl tomorrow so I can work on it during carpool. <laughs> because I think that would be, um, it would be way, way further along if I were to do that. So, but like I said, that one was the Zorzel. And um, even if, though it's a paid pattern, you guys, it's really nice. So go over and check that out and then another paid for pattern um it's these these are the girly feeling socks i don't know if that's gonna focus or not okay hold on let me try let me try this oh that worked so the girly feeling so socks um, and she doesn't specify if she changed colors or used a variegated yarn but I'm using a variegated yarn. It is a toe up pattern and she wants you to make the pattern all the way around the foot which is what I started to do, but then realized, I don't think I want that on the bottom of my foot. So I decided to change, but I'm doing them two at a time. And so I went ahead and changed both of them. And I am using the same yarn. I just did not start at the same spot. So they will not be like ultra identical where, yeah. 
I don't mind. And this is the yarn I am using. And this is some of the the stuff that I got when the yarn shop was closing. This is number 72. And it is this beautiful variegated. Variegated. It's so beautiful. I'm loving it. I actually have two. I had two um, little skeins of it. So I'm using half of it now. And I actually want to. I think I want to make myself some another pair of the broken seed stitch socks. Because I really like that pattern. Uh, it hugs me in all the raw places. That one does. It really does. It's like so nice. And the white of it, the cream color, is just Patton's Croy sock. And it is the muslin colorway. Sorry. Ooh. And yeah, it's just a, a cream color. And the reason... Um, I like to do uh, my pattern socks usually, um, especially like this that is quite, it takes a lot of brain power, you know, um, because there's slip stitches and, you know, like bagel, love bageling, cabling. <laughs> um, it just... I feel like it's just a lot easier to go ahead and do them two at a time so that I don't have to then like try to remember oh did I did I do that many rows oh did I mark that correctly I'm not sure I do keep notes of all of the stuff that I make um I have this little black notebook and I do have my notes i was actually sharing with a friend uh my my madness i guess um this is when i was starting those scatterby socks and so i just like do my repeats and what method i used like this is the dracaris it calls for a lot of repeats the circle numbers are the rows, and that's how many repeats I needed. And look at this. That's crazy. All of this is the Dracaris. And all of that. It's a lot of knitting, y'all. And section seven, because there were seven sections. It was a lot of knitting, but like I said, a lot. Um, it was totally worth it. And so now this is my Zorzel. And with the Zorzel, she actually does not give you um, count uh, stitch count row by row. But she does tell you like, oh, after row one and two, you will be increase increasing by three or four stitches. Like, let's say four stitches. So if at the end of row four, um, you had 20 stitches and it's increasing every two rows, then by row six, you'll have 24 stitches. And then row eight, 28, and so on and so on. So um, what I did was I counted by whatever number it was, I don't remember what it was, and then just wrote the numbers down. And as I finished the row, I just crossed it out um, so that I could then keep track of it and so at the end my number should match to the number that is given at the end of that section right there so yeah that's how i keep track of my stuff uh a little wacky <laughs> and some people would say um uh, it's too much but that's okay i i'm the one doing it so it, it's fine and um yeah, so then I got these and I wanted to cast on something mindless that I could take with me because like I said, I was afraid to take the Zorzel with me. And so um, I ended up casting on a hat, which I thought, oh, a hat will be fine. 
It doesn't matter. It's not going to be that difficult. Uh, but, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's not difficult, but it does take focus. So you do need to make sure that you are keeping track of your rows and all of that stuff. So this is the Macklin hat. Uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but there's little like eyelets in there. And um, I, in the pattern, I tried focus or uh, zooming in on the picture to see if they stack on top of each other and I couldn't tell, but I'm pretty sure I messed up somewhere. I don't know. I actually had to rip back and restart because I was so lost when I put it down and especially because I hadn't even made a little like note thing for it. Um, so I was like, oh no. But now um, I do, I have, yeah, I have my, my little thing and so I need to um, finish doing that uh, so yeah so this is something I cast on it is a twisted rib um, and yeah and I am using a lovely little lavender lilac -y color it is by Fibra Natura 100% extra fine merino I feel like I'm gonna sneeze Ugh. and yeah I have two skeins but I don't think I'm going to use both of them they're each um 110 yards oh baby maybe I'll need to I don't know we'll see I guess yeah um so I'm working on that and then I also because that was taking a lot more effort than I was expecting. I did start some vanilla socks with my hand dyed yarn that I dyed. Do you guys remember these beautiful colors? These are my skeins. Well, not my skeins, my little cakes, teensy, teensy little cakes. But they are lovely. And so I just cast on with Judy's Magic cast on and uh, I was thinking of just doing a vanilla sock but then I was like oh maybe I'll throw in a pearl a pearl row in there and look I have my little pop tart uh, can you see that oh, light light to work with me oh I don't know I waste so much time trying to focus on these things. Anyways, it's my little Pop-Tart um, stitch marker that I got. So, yeah. And, yeah, so I, I'm just doing a vanilla sock. And then I'm knitting 10 rows. And on the 11th, I purl. And then to knit 10 rows, and then I will purl. And so I haven't decided if I'm going to do... Uh, heels, toes, and cuffs in the or orangey color. Um, and then do the rest of the sock, sock in this. Or if I will do the second sock like this. Because I, I don't think I'm going to have enough of the, of the speckly one. Um, so I haven't decided what to do. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I still haven't decided, but I do want to use all three of them because I feel like they are just been sitting there and they need to be used. Um, and so, yeah. So I started those today. And those are all my works in progress. Um... I have some stuff to talk to you guys about that have been bumming me out uh, just because I have not been wanting to work on it because like I said it bums me out I just like I don't even want to touch it I don't want to look at it I want nothing to do with it at all 
um, let me, okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, things that have been bumming me out so much. We will start off with these. These things. These are the leg warmers that I am making for my niece. And I'm so tired of them. Ugh, it's so much rib. So much rib. It's just like never ending. And I'm so close to finishing. Look at this. So close. I think I'm like, I think I have eight rows left. And I was not happy with my bind off. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be tight enough or she's going to have to wear them like this way so that this flares out I don't know I need to I need to work on bind offs I need to try different ones and see which ones I like with rib any suggestions on which ones go which bind off goes well with with a rib if you do have a suggestion please leave it in the comments I would appreciate it so much seriously I would because I was not happy with that one at all but yeah so I have like eight rows left to do on the second one <clears throat> and like I said just because it's so much rib like I don't want anything to do with them because they're in timeout and then the other one is the infamous flax and sleeves why why do sweaters have to have sleeves <laughs> uh i just have it's the same thing like i get i don't know i was thinking about it the other day actually today i was thinking because i was like oh i could totally make a hat if i can make a hat why can't i make sleeves if I make like a simple stockinette hat, it's all stockinette. That's what this is. So why am I being some kind of crazy and not finishing it? Like, just do it. So I may punish myself and just, I say punish because I don't really want to work on it. But I need to. I mean, I'm so close to being done. The kid is going to outgrow this and what what am i gonna do with it he loves these colors so i really need to just finish it hopefully hopefully i will finish it by the time i talk to you guys again but that is still work in progress not really and then um what really bummed me out because that wasn't enough is i had talked to you guys about this beautiful yarn but look at <laughs> look at this oh. I have been trying to pull them out so I could reuse it and it'll work and it'll be okay for a little bit and then look it snags and so I have to like keep trying, keep trying. <clears throat> and the, the okay, dang sock is like making me look bad now because I tried to take it out and I actually had to like waste quite a bit of it. Look, because it was not wanting to. Oh, see, look, something happened. So this is all I had gotten out of it. I wasted like another big chunk of it. And I was frogging it so that I could make new socks from it, right? Like make myself a nice decent pair. But then I got really bummed out because I couldn't rip it out and I kept getting snagged and it was just making me angry. And like I said, now it's doing great. Now here I am just pulling it, which is also I'm not going to stop because if I stop and then try to do it later, it's going to snag. So now I'm just going to unravel this whole thing while I talk to you guys. 
anyways, so if I can get this unraveled all the way, then maybe I will have a pair of socks. Anywho, so that is all that I have. And I wanted to talk to you guys because I made something that wasn't with knitting. And I say make as like I helped make it. I did not do the big part of it, but I helped. So my friend, I have mentioned her before. We call her friend Elle. Um, she, I have mentioned she likes to sew. She does cross stitching. She knits, she crochets. Like there's nothing she doesn't do. Um, there isn't anything she doesn't do. Whatever, however you say it, she does it all. And so I went over to her house and because I hadn't seen her in a bit and um, she was like, oh, we'll come over and we'll just hang out. I was like, okay, cool. And so I went over and I was like, oh, I saw the, look, it ripped. Proof, it just happened now. Um, I was like, oh, I saw these bags that I thought were really cute and I was wondering if you'd be able to make me one and she's like well which bag and i was like it's called a japanese knot bag and she was like oh okay let me look it up so she looked up she found a pattern she prints out the pattern and she's like oh look i just got some fabric go through it see what you like and i was like okay thinking that she was gonna make it for me right well She's like, okay, I printed out the pattern. Here you go. Go ahead and cut the, the fabric. It's like, okay. So I cut the fabric out. All of that. Then we go to her sewing machine and she starts sewing and following the directions. And then she gets to a point where she's like, this isn't making sense. Why is she not doing, like, why do the directions not say to do it this way? And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, I think I'm just going to do it. I was like, okay. So she does what she thinks is best. And it was not the best. She ended up sewing in the wrong spot. And so the bag, it would have worked if it was just going to be like one handle. But because it was two handles, it was horrible. And the bag couldn't, it was not going to work. So anyways. We ended up, uh, well, I ended up, because she started with my bag, I ended up having to take the little sharp thingy and cut the stitches out so that we could undo the sewing. I don't know if there is a term for that. I say it would be the equivalent of like tinking. Um, but anyway, so then... We did that with my bag, and so then she's like, okay, well, now that I saw what I went, where I went wrong, I'm going to start one for myself. I was like, okay. So we're sitting there, whatever, I'm taking it back, and then she finally gets it right with her bag, and she's like, okay, great, so now I know what to do, so now it's time for yours. It's like, okay. So at the end of the day, and after a lot of frustration and struggle and everything, because she was really mad at herself, because she was like, I didn't trust the pattern. I felt like, you know, the, the directions weren't clear and it was just me or whatever. And I was like, it's fine. No problem. Um, I'm still going home with a bag, so it's all good. So, um, yeah, we ended up getting through that and, uh, she, I, I got a little bag, so I'm going to show it to you guys, but now I am balling up this yarn. So let me put that down and show you my lovely bag. And it has a couple of little loose threads because that's what where I like tinked. Anyways, um, so yeah, this is my little bag, and it's reversible. <gasps> Ta-da! Look, it's so pretty. I love it. I want to make. All of them I want to make so many more I actually had some fabric because I hope I hoped to um, 
do something, something, I don't know what, but something with it. And so I have a couple of like fat quarters that I could use and I love it. So this is my little Japanese knot bag and one handle is smaller than the other so that you put it through then you go and then you're like ta-da and this uh the reason why I wanted it like this is because I like when when I take my kids to the park um I like to knit as we walk or you know I'm just whatever um sometimes I just have to sit there while they ride their bikes or whatever, wait for them. And so I like to uh, have my needle or my, my knitting with me. And I actually, I use the one Megan gave me a lot. Um, and so I just wanted something with a little bit more, I guess I could make a knot on this one afterwards and use it. But uh, I wanted something a little bit closer that's not so dangly. And so this one I thought worked great. And so like I said, I love it. And I should have gotten the pattern from her so I could have cut my fabric um, and made some more because I really did like making it. And it's so beautiful. Look at that. Look at that fabric. And this is fabric that she chose. My friend has like such a good eye for fabric choices. I feel like everyone has a lot better um, judgment when it comes to like putting stuff together like I'm horrible with putting colors together <laughs> I don't know anyways um so yeah but then friend here it comes um she watches the podcast from time to time and I told her I was gonna talk about her in the next episode and here it is so I had posted a picture. I will put it here. Um, this is both of our Judy's Magic Toes. Cast on for the toes. Judy's Magic Cast on for the toes. Um, I was casting on for these shoes at her house. For these, for these socks at her house. And uh, she was like, oh, what are you... what?" like method are you using and I was like oh Judy's magic cast on and she's like oh that's what I used for my socks because she was making a pair and I was like oh okay cool and she's like but look and then she shows me the sock and it's got a little like pearl bump at the like a pearl bump row at the very um at the very tip of the toes like right here Right here, she had a pearl bump. I don't have pearl bumps on my Judy's Magic Cast On toes. See, there's another one. No pearly bumps. Right? <laughs> Here's another one. No pearl bumps. Okay. She gets pearl, she got a pearl bump. And she, she was making me laugh so much because we're, I'm like, look at our socks. You need to look at our socks and see that they're not the same, right? Like, and she's like, yeah, because one of us is doing it wrong. She meant I was doing it wrong. And I was like, look, friend, <laughs> one of us is wrong, but it's not me. And she was like, oh, yes, you are, because I saw this tutorial on YouTube, which I don't know which it was. I'm not, I didn't ask her because it was wrong. Um, and she was like, I watched this video. And I think the funniest part of it was what she was so, like, confident that she saw this video and this lady told her and therefore she was right. She's like, I watched it about 10 times and it was, you know, this and that, whatever. And then I was like no 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 you're wrong it's you're not supposed to have a pearl bump and the whole point is for it to be like where you don't see anything you know it's like an invisible cast on type thing and she's like I don't know 
so I posted it on, I posted the picture on Instagram because I was like, I need to like show you that this one is wrong. So anyways, if you want to go and, you know, give your two cents to her, please do go over to my Instagram and tell her she's wrong. <laughs> anyway, so it was just so hilarious because she was like, no, 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 one of us is wrong and it's not me. And I was like, yes, it is you. It is totally you, friend. So anyways, um, I did end up teaching her how to do it properly. I showed her how to cast on with Judy's Magic Cast On properly. Hopefully she will no longer be getting that pearl bump. Um, and so she was just making me laugh with that because she was like, oh yeah. But then, like I said, she was making a pair of socks. And so she's like, oh, I did the fish lips kiss heel. And I was like, oh, okay. She's like, yeah, um, I am a visual learner, so I like watching videos. She is good at just reading it and doing it. So uh, I was like, oh, so did you watch the video? She's like, no, 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 I read the directions. And I was looking at her socks and I was like, wow, you didn't even get like a gap at all on your, like when you connect your heel. And she's like, I know, isn't it great? And I was like, wow, so they fit good, right? Like they're good, they're a good fit on your foot. And she was like, how am I going to try it on? I have them on nine inch circulars. This is a nine inch circular. Okay. Yeah. You can't put a foot through there. But then I was like, wait, so you didn't measure where to put your foot, like your heel. And she was like, well, yeah, of course I did. I went like this. And so she like puts her foot and she's like, look, <laughs> she made me laugh I was like that's not how you measure <laughs> and she's like well it's close enough it'll be fine and I was like oh my gosh friend so I was trying so hard not to freak out and just like what what is happening I was oh, whatever anyways <laughs> She was stressing me out. She was stressing me out with her willy-nilly lack of measuring, not keeping track. Because she doesn't keep track of her rows. She's just like, I'm just going to do it. And I love her. I do love her so much. But she was stressing me out. <laughs> and anyway, so then I was telling my husband about it. And he's like, and you were okay? Like... You didn't freak out. I was like, internally, internally, I did. Internally, I was screaming and like, what is happening? And just, <gasps> but I was like, I, whatever, because we all have our methods and everybody does things differently and that's okay. I can't sit here and judge her and be like, you're doing it wrong. I was just like, well, I do it this way. So I showed her my little notebook and I was like, look look <laughs> look closely <laughs> okay i write the number of cast-ons what method i use usually not here because i usually use judy's magic cast-on and then i told her uh because i put clippy markers to make sure that the, you know this one is one color and that one is getting the same rows that the other color is gonna get like in these right i mean the if you do them two at a time, you don't really have to do it because you're doing the same row two times. But for, you know, when I work with my nine inch circulars, I want to make sure that I'm putting the same amount of rows in each sock and all of that stuff because I guess I'm anal like that. And which I didn't realize until today when my friend was freaking me out with her lack of note taking. <laughs> Oh, I was, I'm stressing out right now because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, friend, why? Why, friend? Anyways. It's fine. Like I said, we all have our methods. Oh. <laughs> so anyways, and friend, I hope you're not taking it personal. You know, I love you and I'm just. You were stressing me out, girl. You really were. <laughs> and she was like, you're okay, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's fine. I don't mind. It's fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But 
hopefully um she got it this time and if she didn't it's fine i'll i'll show her again and i don't mind at all um yeah i like i really enjoy uh helping people and like teaching people new things because it's like it's amazing like i like to learn new things because then i'm like oh my gosh like <gasps> oh okay i will talk about a different friend this is friend e she was blowing my mind because um over the weekend i tried to cut my son's hair <laughs> uh the way i cut hair okay i will show you i pull the hair and I cut it. <laughs> and that's my method. Okay, I don't try to cut it even. It's all horrible. I just like pull it and cut it because he's got curly hair. And when it gets wild, it's like, you, you know, you just pull it and then cut. And it's, it's shorter already. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Um. Anyway, so husband saw his haircut from mom. <laughs> and was like no what did you just do to our child and I was like I cut his hair he wanted me to <laughs> he's like no you ruined him like what did you do why and I was like oh so that's that's not a good haircut he's like no it's not and my husband cuts his own hair um but and he uses the machine but you know he goes kind of short and so I was like he's not gonna that because my son doesn't like very short hair he likes he calls it his wild and crazy hair so he was really happy with my haircut but his dad was not so um I called my friend friend E and I was like hey friend so could you cut my son's hair because um I kind of gave him a bad haircut in my husband's opinion I think he looks fine and so does he <laughs> um anyways so she was like yeah it's fine come on over but when we went over and she started cutting his hair I was like oh, how do you do that like how she did an amazing job one he is seven he fidgets like crazy although he did pretty good he did do pretty good but he did not like the machine at all and she was very patient with him and was like it's okay it's okay but poor friend like she was shaking so bad when she got around his ears and I felt so bad for her and I was like thank you friend thank you friend because she did an amazing job but like I said, learning. So I was looking at her, like watching her do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And she's like, oh, you could totally do this. I'm like, no, 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 uh -uh, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that because I cut hair <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 I can't. And I, anyways, we will be visiting friend E whenever we need a haircut. And mommy will no longer be <laughs> trying to cut hair um so anyways I was being blown away by my friends these last two weeks because I mean I just went to visit her and I came out with a bag right and then with the other one with the other friend my kid got a haircut and he looked so good like she did a really good job I would like to post a picture, but I won't because he does not want to be shown. So anyways, I was just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She did such a good job. She really did. And I was just, I was telling my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, I have like some amazing talented friends. And he was like, yeah, well, you're not too bad yourself. I'm like, no, I, no, I can't. I just knit. Like, that's all I do. I knit and I crochet and that's that like it's not at all the same so anyways um so rambly um but that's okay and 
yeah, that's all I have for you guys this episode. I greatly appreciate you coming over to spend some time with me visiting my little channel. And don't forget to give me some thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it, which I hope you did. And I will put all of my links to my social medias downsta downstairs in the description box below. Um, and yeah, um, I hope you all have a lovely however long until next time and hasta la próxima.